let's build your first village, explain the basics, and then an early infinite money industry that will allow world domination. First, the location of your village. Your settlers start with a homeless people 10 right here in the middle, and they're going to be five families that work for you. And your materials and oxen are situated here as well. Then the materials you get are randomized. I'm having a berry deposit, small one, a normal wild animals. We get a iron deposit and a rich clay deposit. Clay is going to be great for upgrading tier three and you can make some money with it too, but it's not part of our infinite money scheme. Since wild animals and berries are so close, we can actually begin straight here with building. And the best part is we can upgrade the homeless people tent to a worker camp, which will give your families five living spots straight away. So they're not homeless anymore. And your approval rating straight up drops. This is the first thing you should always do. Just upgrade that thing that your villagers are not going to get angry at you. No approval, no new families. Then we build our first road. And that is going to be the centerpiece of our village. And that's going to be the marketplace. In the marketplace, your villagers get what they need. Food, firewood, closing, everything. Click once, second time, third, and a fourth time. That's our market. And then we're going to put some roads around it. Because from this point on, everything will revolve around this middle portion. We're going to build outwards around it. Our marketplace, it's for free. We'll move down to the King's Road. And keep in mind, you can delete all your roads, but you can't actually delete the King's Road. That one is forever. And this is where we build our hunting camp. Doesn't cost us anything. And we'll follow up with a forager hut. That's where the berries are being gathered. Preliminary, we're going to combine our road here with the worker camp just to have the move a bit faster and the material and the oxen cart too. So that we have a direct connection just to this side. Next up will be a woodworking industry. And here we need a logging camp for timber, a woodcutter's camp for firewood, then a saw pit to make planks, not right away. And later a forester's hut that you can actually replant the trees and not run out of trees. So it's opportune to put all these four things together, especially two forester's hut later on, to never run out of wood for the lodge and the logging camp. For this, we'll situate our wood industry right next to the King's Road because it's already there. Logging camp, quite big. Woodcutter's Lodge on the other side of it. And then the Forester's Hut, we don't need straight away, but we will be able to put two next to that. Now you get a home for your five families. We get the basic industries set up as well. But that run through, your workers are essentially going to collect the wood and they do need oxen for that. As you can see, they're taking this oxen. So it does help to have more of those. But in order to have more of those, we need another hitching post. And then the families are building. Now, in order to use the forager's hunt, we have to assign a family. But that's only four families left that can build currently. And all materials. Same goes for the hunting camp. So now we get another family in the hunting camp that goes hunting. And three are left to build or haul materials. Now, they finished the workers camp as well. So we don't have anyone being completely homeless anymore. That's a good thing. And we get the woodcutter's lodge. We do have a high amount of fuel though. That's why we're not going to put anyone in the woodcutter's lodge straight away. We'll rather wait for the logging camp to be done that we can build more things because we only have three timber left at this point. That means we need more material done and we can put two families in. That leaves one family left for construction and hauling materials. And as you can see right now, we straight up got the food stall. So our forger hut that gets the berries is being put there that our people are actually getting something to eat. Now we wait for timber to be produced to then build our first living quarters. And they're going to be situated around the market. Under residential, the burgage plot is what we need. And there's something very important about them because the burgage plots can have a bonus production facility in the back. And this is super important. That means you're going to select the two points, then third, and fourth, this wouldn't be big enough. So we right click, pull out further. And now you see that tiny hammer. That is the production building in the back. This is needed for our infinite money industry. Get these done and then I'll explain further. Now you get your logging camp logging. You get your woodcutter's lodge, not woodcutting yet because we don't need that much firewood. And we only have it in March. So there's no much heating needed. And our forger hut is foraging. You could put more people in because this is currently growing and not getting empty. 
as the wild animals are actually getting empty because you are setting a hunting limit of 10 that you don't completely hunt them to extinction. Now there's only one family building, so I'd rather remove one dude from the logging camp that gives us still a timber production, but at least there's another family left, another five members that are now able to help with the construction that these things are actually being done a little bit faster. The oxen can move a bit quicker and take those wooden logs to the burgage plots. And the more plots you have, the more families can move in. Right now I have space for six families. So one family could move in if I have enough approval. More approval, more families move in. Now this one is done. The burgage plot is done down here. And you can click on the construct a backyard extension. This will cost money. So we'll have to create money. Very important. And what we're going to go for is goats. You could make a chicken coop for food variety or a vegetable garden, but goat sheds produce heights. Heights are being produced from hunting too, but we want more heights because heights can be made into leather. And since you can put one goat shed into every living quarter, you can create an infinite height industry. That's not what we want to sell though, because that's only a base product, correct? Continue building up your village to reach five burgage plots because then it's going to be a small village. And that small village is going to give you a development point. And these development points, plenty important. Now, all the plots are done and we're straight up going to make another goat chan. Don't worry about spending all your money. We'll earn that back plenty. Next up to make money is a trading post. A trading post will situate right next to the forager's hut on the King's Road because that's what they're going to be running down on. Why wouldn't they be right here? Now, we have two families that are essentially building, one family cutting wood, foraging we get the hunting camp we're slowly getting lost on some firewood but that's okay we still have an april we can do this later you'd rather want to have your buildings actually being done fast again one family is building one family is currently pulling your things in with the oxen card and that's the most efficient way in the beginning to have like two families for the build and that's why you want to extend your burgage plots in the beginning to actually attract more families we have market and food variety because we're offering up meat and berries so we have two varieties of food currently happening, actually three because she has some bread in the beginning, and that makes people happy. If they're happy, more families will move in. Trading post is done. And if you want to start trading, there needs to be a family assigned to this one too. What you can trade is literally everything, and you can buy everything. But buying stuff is extremely important. Import prices are crazy. And in order to export some goods, for example, leather, we would need to build a trade route otherwise we can't export this and leather is six yep that brings us six hides only give us currently four the good thing is we can sell hides without establishing a trade route that means right now i have 13 hides already from my goat farms and i can straight up set this to export and then put one of my workers to actually start exporting then we get more money and then with that more money we can make more goat farms in the back of our burgers plots. And that's step one of our infinite money industry. Now we need more plots for more families because that worker camp is not really a nice living point, right? It's just a tiny little worker camp. So we have to extend our village here further. And since we're building around the marketplace, we'll take this road and we'll pull this out to the left a bit further for now and add a bunch of plots to the side. And I like to start from the left, pull to the right, so you can pull it down all the way. And then you can put another, oh, I can put another four in here. Hmm? Bam, another four, perfection. That cost me eight timber. That's all my timber gone. And we only have one building family right now. This is a bit of an iffy because they have to pull the materials in and build the thing. So that's gonna be not as fast as, but we need that one in to essentially make us money. We just made 44 money straight up from selling our heights. That means next go chan. You see how this is going? We can make more go chance. Now that's again, only step one. We'll get to step two and then even step three in a jiffy. While our burger spots are being built, you have some warnings up here. Goods stored are vulnerable. So these goods here in the beginning, they would have to be put into a pantry so that they don't actually go bad. We don't have a pantry yet. A pantry would be the granary building where food gets stored. 
and you also have a storehouse where the rest of the materials get stored because right now they clog up the logging camp they're actually sitting in the foraging hut before we start building these things though we need to make sure that we get more families now we're at six families already that's fantastic because i have one more family to assign anywhere i could put it in the forage hut so that we get more food stalls going out i could put it into well more trading or more logging but instead i'll leave them open so they actually move around and get things built faster because again we're getting more money but what does the more money use us when well our goat chats are not being goated keep in mind we also ran out of fuel and well these buildings need constant refueling so they're actually happy therefore that one family that we have left over can finally go into our woodcutter's lodge it's about time when we get a lot of food you'll need a lot of food because in the end berries are not growing in the winter yeah <laughs> surprise animals respawn in the winter berries don't now we can put it away from the hunting camp because the guy in the hunting camp can't hunt because there's not enough wild animals there so you can use that worker right now to help with even more construction that will allow us to get more families faster in now we get our first development done and this one needs to go for trade logistics establishing a new trade route always costs a maximum of 25 wealth if you're going for the trade post that is an interesting one because right now i would already pay 36 for this trade route and back here it's 144 for some trade routes 48 and this actually gets more expensive the more trade routes you open that's at least what i noticed but this is not the point where you want to go i'm going to put one point into trade logistics and then the second point into better deals remove the tariff from foreign imports effectively reducing all import prices by 10. now let's check what would it cost me if i wanted to import food food would cost me currently 13 12 13 14 12 that is very expensive and if i would export let's say leather because heights can be turned into leather i would be making six per leather so if i export for six and i can buy food then for minus 10 three or two i'm getting infinite food while i'm producing infinite leather with my goat farms and that's not even the final product for money making that's the first point into trade logistics and the next point is being earned by upgrading our buildings to tier two for the tier two upgrade they need two food they need fuel clothing that would be leather and they'll need a charge plus water actually i did forget to build a well that's kind of an amateur mistake for a well you open the building menu and check for underground water oh that almost went terrible luckily there is underground water there so we can build a well after pulling out the road a bit further at this location fantastic and then we give it a higher building priority because we want this to be done as fast as possible now since our kindling is going down currently and we still have eight timbers left i'm going to put the dude out here and i'm going to put a second point in because we got it may winter is coming we <laughs> We're going to make sure that we pull enough in. Wild animals are slowly respawning. So you could put the hunter back into the hunting camp. When I'm still wanting to have like two families for construction right now. And I would be happy if we actually get another family in. Uh, we could put one more in the forage hut. Because again, this is growing. And the more berries we have, the better. The biggest problem right now is that our pantry is actually full. In order to take care of that problem, it would be about time to build the granary. And the granary, again, is going to have all the food from the food production buildings being pulled in there. And not only that, if you put one person into the granary, then he's going to be running the food stall. Because right now, the Forja hut, the family owns a market stall. So one person from the Forja hut is actually sitting here and well, putting out the food for the people. We get another family in. Fantastic. Finally, I can put one in the Forja hut, which does nothing. So I'll put him in the hunter camp because they're currently full. They can't actually produce more. I'd rather have the family produce the pantry really, really fast. And then I'll put a person in there to actually yoink all the food out of these things into our food storage, which is better. We're making more money. Person comes in here and we continue building goat farms. Check if people are already living in these houses, because right now there is no family yet living in. Because if no family is living in, no one is taking care of the goats. Regardless of this, we're going to build a goat farm. 
and the goat farm because families will move in. Now, it would be good if we could actually make sure to get more approval. And more approval is quite simple to get. That would be having a church. This is a wooden church and you need the church anyways. But for the church, we need planks. And right now, we're actually not producing any more timber. It's kind of like a bit of a bummer. Not only are we not producing any more timber, you kind of got to erase your worker camp now because there's still five homeless people because they're living in this worker camp and you actually want them to live in your plots. That will reduce the living spaces by five. So now before we build anything else, we got to actually get again more plots running <laughs> that more families can move in. And for this, I like to go for double rows. So I'm pulling out this very far to then pull this all the way over. Finish before I continue clipping the road. I'll make sure that I can now actually put. And I'll make sure that I can now put them with production buildings. Yep, that works out. So we can build four more plots for four more families. And then we'll not combine this here yet because well there is the connection road we don't need a different connection road currently and this is going to be the first ginormous living space plus well goat farm and their food variety is rising we got a lot of food and that's good but we do need someone to actually finally get more timber so that means pulling one person out of the woodcutters to get it back into the logging because we got some kindling, some firewood running. We have a June. We have still quite some trees. That's a good thing. But we do need to get more families because we're finally getting into this spawn where we also need to start putting the foragers hut in because sure, they're going to be deforestation this here. But if we don't start regrowing some trees at some point, we'll end up not having much. Now you do notice we still only have one oxen. One oxen means only one log can be locked around. For example, the saw pin needs logs. So if one oxen is only there for construction, we will need to make sure that there's enough oxen in the whole encampment. Now at this house, a family already moved in. So straight up, getting a goat farm. You could go for chickens to actually make sure that you have more food. But at this point, that is not needed because with this berry deposit and putting multiple people in here, you generally recover enough for your first winter. Those 64 berries are nice. And if we upgrade a building to two, we can remove the import tax to essentially straight away get us food for, well, free because we're selling our goat hides or more now we're already at eight families that's amazing we just another family moved in our settlement is significantly growing we do need the church for more approval so families are coming faster in and we can upgrade to tier two for the next upgrade so that we can then make even more money now there is no family in here yet so we're going to wait, wait for a family to move in to then build another goat farm again we need all the goat farms possible. You kind of want to have like 14 goat farms roughly. It sounds like a lot, but we're cool there. 10 spaces, 10 families. So two more can move in. And the last building is being done. Now our next step is making more money and providing closing. So we're going to build a tannery. And that tannery has two purposes. First, we provide the closing requirement here. But we're going to turn the heights that we're infinitely producing with more houses into leather. Leather is amazing. First, let's put this one down and we'll probably hmm, get the tannery right next to our trade building. Since leather actually sells for six per instead of the four. So we're selling a better product for more money. Now we can already establish the trade route, but we don't have it yet. So that would feel like a bad thingy. Just to give you an outlook, there's the commodities tab. And here the things sell for 6888888888. And there's one thing we'll make of that. Now let's try to attract more families because more families are always needed to continuously keep going on. Could buy a horse to have your trader trade faster, but we don't have the amount of heights yet to face this kind of problem, right? We'll have more families. Or we'll need to have more families move in. That we can then build more goat shacks and now having three out of four things already provided 
our next worker is going to go into the tannery. That's going to be the eighth worker that we then still have one family essentially logging things around and we have space for 11 people in total. Next big thing to build is still going to be the church. So for this, after the tannery, we would be going for a gathering and we'll build the saw pin. The saw pit is going to come right into the wood industry because it's going to essentially take the logs out of the logging camp or it's going to even take the logs out of this area living there. Again, we'll need an oxen for that. So it would be opportune to finally decide to build another oxen hitching post. And that hitching post can essentially be put right here for these buildings, essentially, that the oxen just is close by. Bandits just stole some resources. That's an annoying thing that can happen because there are bandit camps around. And we'll make sure to... There's a bandit camp and there is... Really only that one. I have to make sure to actually nuke that. And yes, you can claim the other areas as well. Don't worry, so we'll get that. We have nine families. Fantastic. That means our tannery can now start making hides into leather. We still have 100 for money. And we'll have to stop the trade with the hides now. No more trading. We want the hides for ourselves. And we'll check where the next family moved in. This one has a family moved in. This one has no family moved in. There is no family moved in. And there's a family. So since there's a family moved in right now, boom, they get their goat shack. Checking on the saw pit. It's done. We can put a worker in there. And he's now with the oxen. There you go. Gathering the log and bringing it here. If you don't have the oxen, then you can't actually, well, get, get the lumber in there. Now we'll, we'll make more lumber because we need 20 planks out of the timber to essentially build our church. That will now happen. See, there's the oxen again. <laughs> and that means hitching post. I would like to buy another oxen. That we essentially have one more. When we only have one lugging family anyways. But if you have two oxen, you want to have two families be able to lug things around the world. But obviously the whole family that's working in this building, they're going to be just taking that oxen too. That kind of works very well. You can even assign one to permanently just work for the building. I don't think that's necessary. It works kind of well. Now we almost have a luxury problem. You can see this generic storage almost full. And the thing is that this dude currently, instead of making more firewood, is here sitting on the market stall selling the firewood. To prevent this, you can build another thing called a storehouse. And that storehouse, and that storehouse, like the pantry, We'll have a dude working in there that brings in all the goods or the goods will be brought in here. And then he also open up the market stalls so the people in the camps don't have to do that. And the storage of the production buildings isn't being clogged up. So that's what you want to build probably close to the market, close to your production buildings, not too far away from things so you can get stuff out of there. And now we get nine out of 11 families. So we also have to slowly think about making more houses. And then we're going to start again here. One, two, three. Pull this out. That would be kind of looking weird. So I'll put this rather out one more to the side. One, two, three. And then we get the triple again. So we are perfectly set up. Pull the timer forward and then we can put 14 families in there. Our approval is already at 60 because now we're supplying clothing. Okay, we're getting clothing over the leather. And if you then finally have the leather, people are going to be happy that they can get the cloth. In the long run, we'll want to sell the leather though. So that's very important to keep your 25 money to be able to actually establish the trade route. Now we get the trade route. We'll go for export. And we'll make sure to keep five leather. Okay, we want to have five leather surplus. But everything over that five leather is being sold. That we can then straight away get more goat farms. <laughs> because more goat farms is straight away more hides. And we only have one worker so far in the tannery. Yep, we can put even more workers in the tannery to make even faster. And for this, we'll need more hides in the long run have that even be worth it but we're working on that 
berries. We get tons right now, so that's perfect. Our food is at 100, so we'll not run out of food. The only problem is that our food variety is not there. It's only berries right now. The best thing we could do currently is upgrade our town to a medium village and then better deals plus continuously importing mead since our meat production is a bit low our wild animals deposit is a bit of a stinker but then we're going to sell leather for double and buy mead for half infinite money infinite food infinite happiness because the berry deposit is more than enough to have enough food for the whole year and the winter month let's continue the rush we got 10 families already in we need to construct to be able to get more families in and we're already at 20 planks 20 planks is great but we're actually missing one timber currently not only are we missing one timber as you notice we don't have enough wood anymore slowly when I mean, the people have to run out further further and further so it's time to build a forester's hut right next to the things and in the long run you will want to have two forester's huts I mean, right now, one is enough because one forester's hut has the space for two to build in there. So two families can actually work under that. Now, keep in mind that every time this one is going down to 10, you can actually yoink the hunting camp dude out and you can put one into the storehouse or the granary instead because the granary guy is currently sitting in the food stall and he's actually, this is the granary guy and it's not one of the foragers or one of the hunting camp dudes so he's like selling that our berry deposit is almost empty so we can now yank the dude out here and he's going to help with the construction efforts when we're 10 families so that's fantastic but we're not only with the construction efforts he's actually going to be going into the forester's hut we can already start putting down some trees we have it september so in september they're actually yeah september to november they're still planting some trees that we're not completely running out of but our berry deposit is not growing anymore. It's completely depleted. So that one is out of the order right now. We have 61% happiness. More families are spooling in. We get another family. So we get to check where they moved in here. And that is the next foot farm. <laughs> More goats. We're running out of money though. As you can see, we're down to 13 wealth because we've spent all our money. And we're currently waiting to produce more leather that we can then essentially sell more. I mean, we got 14 hides, that's huge. And the leather guy, like he's making it very quick. If you want it faster, you could put in another person, but that's actually not needed. You're usually good off with having one guy in the beginning in, just rake up some hides, make that leather, keep selling. And now we have 11 families, so we're, we're getting this done. And with these 11 families and our resources right now popping, we can finally build the church. The church is the last cornerstone needed to really excel this village then to the next step to get our level two upgrades. And since this road was a bit shoddy in the beginning, we'll be deleting that road now. Boom. Then we'll build a straighter road. I think that's a straighter road. Yeah. Don't forget to connect... Uh, don't forget to connect these two points here. We'll pull we'll pull this one a bit straighter out. And then and then connect this too. We have all of this connected. Now we can build our church to really be next to the marketplace, but also provide all the houses with spiritual guidance. If I'm taking good care, I could actually build a lot of houses here next to this. Let's see if we actually did not ruin this. So if the if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to yes, look at that houses with still production in the background when I don't have the resources right now because I used it all up for the church. Don't forget that the church needs a person in it as well. So every person needs someone working there and we might just build this church and we'll keep the three families because the church needs a lot of resources, wood, planks, stone, everything. And you barely have like enough stones to actually make this happen, right? And now our first six gold made again. We're slowly going up. The leather is being sold. We have seven leather, eight leather, and everything above is being sold for six. That's our money scheme developing very fine. We're not done though yet because there's one last thing missing. And that is going to be our upgrade to level two plots. 
Level two plots have two reasons why they're important. Because first, they'll allow us to build the next level of workshops. For example, a blacksmith workshop, cobblers, a boyos, bo boyos, or an armor's workshop. What we're looking for is a cobbler. Because cobbler turns leather into shoes. And that, last but not least, then under commodities, allows us to sell shoes for aid. So we're creating infinite goats, infinite leather, infinite hides, and then we'll have a workshop that makes boots. These boots are closing necessity for the villagers as well. But on top of that, since we're just keep on keeping on making goat stalls, you have a industry for truly infinite money. That doesn't seem like it right now because we're consistently spending our money. But without this being set up, we couldn't even build the amount of goat farms right now, correct? Not only that, you could not have the money to buy yourself food if we needed. And later on, if we have enough goat farms, we can then start building chicken coops as well to provide essentially another level of food production to have more food variety happening. Because right now our food variety is a bit slim. Right? I mean, the hunting grounds are done for. That means we're going to pull the dude out of the hunting camp as well. Horster's hut has one. Woodcutting camp has one. We don't have that much firewood. So I'm going to actually put one more in there that we can get more firewood. And we're going to put one person in the storehouse that he finally starts pulling these things out of the woodcutter's lodge, for example. Because the people can't get their fuel if there's no one having a market stall. Yeah. <laughs> Very important. This building already has all requirements met. So we can upgrade this to level two. And one thing I forget to mention is level two plots generate one regional wealth per family per month. So if you actually get these upgraded to two, and let's see if there's another one that luckily met the requirements. No, there's only one that met the requirements right now. Sometimes you're lucky and you have multiple. So the first one met the requirements. That's good. You get some food variety popping, and he's happy. Now we'll need to hope for the second one to get the food variety because we still had some meat in stock, right? We still had some things going on. So they were they were happy. I mean, this needs probably the food stall for the second type of food, and then we'll be happy. We can't do this because we're not going to be wasting our money until we get better deals. Okay, so I mean, that's 10 less per food bond. I want to buy for 12 silver or wealth per or for two wealth. That's a big difference. Now our church is done and it's providing the church level. We can assign a family to the church, but at the moment that is not needed because it is enough to spread the, ch the message of the church already. A new family has moved in. We're checking if this is going to be one of these uh, non-goat shacked buildings already. There's no family built in, no family moved in, and there is a family moved in. So you're getting another goat shack because we have 15 hides, seven leather. You notice that is working very well. And this is now a level two plot, right? Verge plot level two. And we could straight away transform our goat shed into a cobbler's workshop. I would then transform the leather into boots and we could open up the next trade route for boots already. And this is how fast it goes. This is goats, 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 goats. And we'll just upgrade this to a cobbler's workshop. And then we'll establish the trade route. Commodities, shoes, establish, and we'll export all the shoes. We'll keep only five for now. That means, though, that we have to stop exporting the leather because we'll obviously only export the shoes. Fantastic. That is already the first steps into your infinite money industry. Now, the more goat shacks you have, the more goats we're getting together, you could build another cobbler's workshop to then consistently produce yourself the amazing amount of free money. We haven't even done taxation yet. I know taxation is theft and it will cost you approval. You don't want to do this early. We want to bump the approval up vastly further before even thinking about that. By the way, you notice how the replantation is working out fantastic. Might have to put another dude into the forest hut in the long run, but we can have 14 families right now 
We don't need to put more in. Rather, our goal is to have winter be over that we can then provide more wild animals. And here we put a hunter back in. So he goes hunting. The hunting will give us meat. And that meat will then allow us to provide a second level of food for our people again that we can then upgrade the next building because that's the only thing that's keeping it back. And we need a second level two to get it done. That's going to be very simple. We essentially just have to wait very chilly for one or two there, generic storage, meat came in. So we finally have one meat. Now we just need to wait for someone. Boom, he has eaten meat. That means instant upgrade. More money is flowing in because we have level two buildings that are finally providing this. I mean, yes, they have more needs, but it's not giving you a minus not fulfilling these needs straight away. By the way, closing stalls, they're happy because they're getting leather and boots straight away. Even though we're selling these shoes, right? We already have one shoe here and it would probably be opportune to build a second cobbler's workshop in the long run before we do this we'll have to max out the goats on the side and then we can think about doing that when we're currently at 13 living people here and we can have 14 with us we get a bunch of families but you do notice how they're also all working at somewhere i mean if you need a boost in wood at some point you need a boost in more trees at some point just assign the workers as intended especially since we're not having any work being done right now we can easily do this you don't have to have the workers sit idle keep though in mind that the unworking family the unassigned family also logs things around puts things into your storehouse so they are actually helping we're finally by the way at six shoes so that means one shoe can be sold yep like the shoes are being taken out though obviously for the clothing requirements of the people but the shoes are also being straight up sold again we're making more money and our money glitch continues working out you could sell the leather instead and right now we have 25 hides and almost no leather so it is the time of the year where putting a second person in the tannery is necessary we pull one person out of the forest as hud because in winter they're actually not planting trees it means we can pull the two people out there to right now just provide another worker family and we're currently at our 14 limit here so we could consider with the eight timber we have to build already another it almost be quad so again make it one longer look at this a beautiful quad right below the church four more families can be moving in bringing us to a grand total of 18. That's like the thing. You need more families. You need more food. You need more fuel. It's kind of like stacking each other up on the demands. But the more families you have, the more plots you have, the more goats you can get, the more leather you can produce, the more hides you can have, the more boots you can get, the more things you can sell, and, well, the more consistent money we can be making. Because later, we want to end up just in the thousands that we'll ne never have to worry again about things. And if you then add taxation to that in the long run, and for taxation, you would have to build the administration and your manor. That's not what we're looking forward to right now. Now the step I promised the whole time, better deals, boom. Now with this development unlocked, you can essentially go into your trading post, train, and suddenly everything is cheap. Whatever you would need. Even if I wanna import ale instead of making ale later, I only exported for eight instead of 18 per. But now I can make sure to have a continuous import of meat and it only cost me two wealth per meat instead of 12, which is very easy since I'm continuously selling my shoes. We don't need this right now yet. I'd rather make sure that we essentially make more money because there's another level to our money industry. And that one would be called large shields. Because right now, you can make infinite trees with a forester's hut. You can make infinite wood with a logging camp. And then you can make, oh, on top of that, even more planks. And these planks in an upgraded building can be turned into shields. So now you have the joiner's workshop who's going to be using your wood products, which are infinite, to continuously produce shields that you can then also sell here for another six per shield. Right now you wanna keep 36 large shields because in your militia that you're making, 
boom, we got 2020. So the militia that you could summon in case you're being attacked needs 36 spears and 36 large shields. So you would always want to keep those 36 large shields. But due to the workshop, we can overproduce them and have another infinite money setup since we're working not with finite resources. Compared to, for example, our iron deposit, that's a 115. This one is a 180 stone deposit, and this is a clay deposit. It's a rich clay deposit, and there is an upgrade later to build deep mines that you can essentially infinitely farm on rich deposits. That is something you also need, because else you'll run out of finite resources at some point. But having an infinite resource production where you can then keep selling things, that's brilliant. Now, keep in mind, we already have it January, right? So time's moving on. And slowly, with the seasons on spring, these things are going to be starting to fill up again. I mean, not, not only do we need then foragers back in action. By the way, it's 72 money again. We're making good. We'll need the foresters hut to be back in. I think we could cut one out of the woodcutting lodge right now because there's just too many. Uh, we need a little bit more timbers, so we'll put a second one in there. I mean, even though we don't have, like, that many trees. So we'll have to put in the forester in the long run, too, because we're slowly going back to the month where the forester can actually put some things in. Our tannery has two people in that we have continuous leather production because our leather needs to be high. Our boots need to be high. Our things need to be sold. And then we're checking, is there a family moved in here? Perfection, more goats. Is there a family moved in here? Perfection, more goats. And lastly, there's a family moved in here. So again, we got a huge amount of goats. This is actually one, two, three, four, five, six. And then that's the cobbler's workshop. And then we get another seven down here. So we have 13 goat farms to continuously produce enough hides for this scheme to work out and continuously produce enough shoes. Now do keep in mind with more level two plots, you'll be also using up more of your shoes because they have shoe requirements. So you're going to make sure to really have enough hides, enough leather, enough goats, that you can then continuously overproduce in shoes to have this good money set up going. And now in order to build another cobbler's workshop, we'd obviously need to just simply upgrade the next building. Oh, this one has not been having a goat farm the whole time. Oh, this one has not been having a goat farm too. Jesus, Ch Chan, we've been missing out. Okay. Almost made a mistake. Now this though is step one of the infinite money. You saw it with the leather and we told you about the production with the joiners workshop and the shields. And for the next further steps, we would build our manor and the manor would then provide a continuous stream of money by a simple taxation of 5%. It's not much, but you're solely gonna be soaking up your money that you can then buy as soon as you have tax an infinite influx of food because your tax will then make up for the mead we're continuously buying to essentially have always a double variety running because if you have a double variety running, your people are always happy and you can always upgrade to level two families and level two families will continuously pay more money than for a family for a burger's plot to then bring in even more money. Now we could build all the way out there on the stone deposit. But technically, we just need 15 stone and it costs one stone. So I could be importing 15 stone for 15 wealth. Simple as is. Don't have to like right now build the deposit. Just get enough stones that you're able to essentially get your manor locked down. Because we're making continuous money. Again, we have the food still with the berries we have the fuel we could actually everything going on we have 15 families already that's fantastic and february is coming in soon march and with that the seasonal deposits start growing again now we get the logging camp actually destroying everything that's logging wise uh this one is almost full so we get to upgrade the storage as you can see the storage is almost overfilled the granary is still having good amounts of food that's a nice thing and you can upgrade this to have a herb garden because herbs that are being harvested are good against illnesses. Now, I never had a problem with that, so kind of didn't need the herbs. But the herbs can also be sold, if I am not completely mistaken.
for two per. So if your forager's hut has their own herb garden and you have enough people working there, then they'll continuously produce herbs on top of that that you can sell for more money. Now, we don't... Wow, I got 13 of my freaking hides stolen by bandits. I, I hate that. Making, making units is very important. And making taxation to then increase your treasury to be able to hire mercenaries because then you can just torch that bandit camp and you'll not randomly lose resources anymore because that it's, it's really very annoying to do that. We get 140 planks. And planks is another thing that you could consider for a money industry. Right now, I'm just going to pull this guy out. But planks are actually selling for two per. We have 140. I mean, we could straight up sell 100 planks for another 200 wealth. I mean, we don't need this. As you can see, we're already at 200 wealth. We can start buying our dude a horse so we can actually trade faster. If we buy him a horse, though, to trade faster, then we'll need to upgrade this one that the horse actually has a spot where it can live in. Because you right now see here that your livestock and you need enough stable spaces. We get 15 families. We're 18 in. Another bandit camp was sighted. Jesus, that means even more robbery is going to happen. Yes, even though the bandit camp is all the way out there, as long as one bandit camp exists, even if it's here and there, they will just randomly steal resources from you. So you got to make sure to actually exterminate these bandit camps. Now, there's also families slowly moved in here. So we could make more goat farms, but currently we're actually at 11 heights, which is really good. And you could start thinking about making chicken coops. Because chicken coops, again, produce a second sort of food that you then straight don't have to import. No, you would have your chickens actually produce the chicken. You would have your chicken coops produce the eggs. The eggs are being sold by the granary. And your villagers are becoming happy that we can then upgrade this to level 2 with a food stall variety. So that is now the next three buildings here right now. This has a family in already. So you're going to be having chickens. There is a family. There's no family in here. No family in here. No family in here. It means we're going to have one chicken production already happening. Don't worry. More goats, more hides, more leather, more boots. So all of this, get it like we're probably going to have another six to seven goat farms here to then produce even more. And now finally, that dreary February is over and the game continues being <laughs> better for you because your food stores were running low, your fuel was running out, your trees were not growing. So you notice how things were actually going bad. And now the seasonal is starting to grow again. So we're going to upgrade the herb garden. We're going to put people in here. The animals are coming back as well so that our hunting camp can be going hunting again. And as soon as this starts now nicely growing, you can put a second forager into the forager hunt. I mean, the good thing is now he's actually growing herbs. So you're going to start gathering herbs that we can then continuously get this. But with this growing here, berry deposit, double. We're going to put two workers in because two workers can never deplete one deposit third worker would straight away deplete this now we need to put another one into the forester sun so that two people are growing enough trees for a woodcutter and a logging camp the saw pit was full anyway so we got 138 planks we have more than enough and we do actually have finally our 15 stones that means we can no trade and then you can decide that you would like to build your manor and your manor can be built anywhere I'm going to be actually pulling this a little bit out because it's going to be in the long run a cool castle because that's that's the nice thing about mana lords it is having your manor here and you can build walls and gates towers garrisons everything i'm not going to waste many resources on this right now just to give you a feeling you can start building an actual you know wall around your manor in the long run to have this then be like a very cool actual castle so not just something there but you can always return to the castle building menu as soon as it's done and never have to actually worry about that so that's kind of cool now by the way with enough people in i'm actually going to be putting one dude into the church so that's our wooden church now popping we have space for 20 families so three more families can move in and our approval is at 78 we have closing market, we have church level, food variety, we have everything going on, correct? And our money is actually growing. So we have a steady influx of money. That means I would probably prefer now to start importing meat. 
and make sure that we always have 10 meat. I mean, that's only 20 wealth and we always have 10 meat going on on top of our berries. I mean, again, berries here, the deposit is growing even with two people. So we could even put a third person in here to gather more berries. Because again, this is seasonal. You want to really deplete or work as hard as possible with this, right? You don't, you don't want to be ever in the position where you're suddenly not having enough food or where you're going to be wasting that seasonal growth. You notice that this is depleting, just pull the worker out. And since we got more food right now, so we're going to import the meat. That means we have two types of meat. And in order to have this guy now trade two things, you might as well put another person in there when we can assign a permanent livestock so that they have this horse actually working for them. Now we lost 20 gold. We actually have 10 meat, right? We get just nine boots stolen from us. That's actually really, really annoying. I hate that. <laughs> nine boots is a lot of money. And since our manor is done, we can soon start the sexation. But now we get mead, so we can upgrade. We can upgrade. We can upgrade to level twos. And all of these now will provide us a passive income boost. That's what we talked about. And now with the mead that we're importing, we're creating food variety. We can then upgrade and make essentially the infinite upgrade loot to get more get more money, then have our wealth continuously growing higher and never stop. And the more families move in here right now, boop, we can do some again as we, nope, that was a goat farm. Oops, I wanted to make a chicken coop actually. Mistake, okay. So the more families that move in now on the side, the more chicken coops we can go for, the more resources we can create. We then have another level of food, another level of food variety, because later they want triple food variety and quad food variety. Now, keep in mind, though, we have 18 spaces, so we do actually need to slowly start building. Yes, you guessed, Ryan, even more houses. <laughs> that one actually never stops to continuously be a need. And you want to build the houses again that they have this bonus production slot. Without the production slot, it wouldn't be worth it to even remotely think about it, right? You're constantly need to essentially expand your village. You're getting more families and we're getting like more level twos upgraded. And I tend to keep two workers really up here that we're just getting the things done, right? And again, we're at 323. Our wealth is actually only growing. And we're going to get this one done here now with the highest priority that people are actually going there. So I can show you the taxation. Now, I know taxation is theft, but I'm the ruler, so... We all profit if I'm taxing, right? It's important. Now we get the construction completed, right? And the good thing is when you have this thing done, you're actually getting your first retinue. And these guys can be rallied straight away. Not only rallied straight away, there they are a tiny retinue right now, but we could actually send them out to potentially make sure that this bandit camp is not a problem anymore. I and mean, when we don't want to mess with the mercenary archers here that our that our friend has going on, we're going to take this to just move up to the bandit camp. Now, we could go with a bigger team, but we don't actually need that. And now for finishing the manor, we also get influence. And influence is gained by settlement level policies conquering bandit camps. And influence will be needed to essentially claim regions. This one is a thousand influence needed that I could claim this. But we get our manor done. You can go in the castle planner at any time, right? castle plan to keep getting this bigger right to get more garrison towers to get more retinue plus 12 what we're going to do here right now is we're going to actually go into the manor and taxes and you can click this up right this is minus approval but we're just going to go for five land tax five that's okay because that's only minus, minus three and it's getting less slowly more money and there's a tithe percentage of surplus food this is giving to the church that's also five percent that means that the church is consistently getting food from you, and that food is slowly getting your influence higher. Literally, it doesn't cost you anything. Oh, he's actually moving his mercenary archers in the way of my dudes. For no reason. Okay, so then we're going to disband this unit, and we'll, we'll wait for the mercenaries to be gone to, to think about raiding this bandit camp. Because I, I don't want to, like, you know, get, get in their hair. That would be unfortunate. We got 20 families in. We can get more families in. Again, you always want to have the surplus that more families could move in. But that also is chickens, chickens, chickens. So we get every single thing is now producing. 
and we can upgrade again to even more two families like look at that even more two families more two families points per two family and this is something missing currently that i kind of know how much am i paying so so kind of like a full money breakdown like how much am i paying for the trading pass right to continuously have the meat upgraded by the way we could probably get the meat upgraded to actually 15 it can always be 15. Uh, but how much money am I also making by then selling the shoes, right? I mean, you see, we have the leather, we have the shoes. Might actually put another person into the tannery to really get enough leather. But right now, the problem is not the leather. Right now, the better part would be upgrading one to another cobbler's workshop. And we have double cobblers going on and we really just deplete that leather, right? When you still have to make sure to always have enough leather because they want leather and clothes. But you also want to be in the position where we are just straight up having enough and yes the interesting point is we could also import heights for four to to then sell the boots for eight so we're making still the bonus money there right we could just simply import things build the cobblers but it's just easier to actually infinitely produce the heights because it doesn't cost us anything to produce that the same as it goes for the saw pit. I mean, right now we are not making any more planks, but you notice the thing where really planks can be made infinitely and there's no problem with this. By the way, right now you notice how the construction efforts are actually really, really slow because we have our families be like only one family currently going on. So you could pull one forester out because we have the forest station happening here very good. We really have the two building families. I mean, we have three in the forges hut, one in the storehouse, one in the granary. That's good. But with like only one family building, it's going so slow. Now we're getting more goats because we actually upped the whole leather production area, right? And we upped our shoes. Suddenly we have 22 shoes. You know, you notice how fast that is going with two cobblers workshop, right? Our leather is just shrinking. So we're going to make sure that now we're producing a vast higher amount of goats again. And by the way, our approval is going a bit down because right now the taxation is going to be kicking in. But you notice we're already in the next set of towns. Now you're going to make a decision. You would actually choose sheep breeding because that would mean that your sheep's grazing on the pasture slowly multiply. That's an infinite sheep glitch. Yes. The next level of the money making, we make sheep's and then we have the sheep's breed and these sheep's are going to be then able to be sold. Or you can just get more wool, more linen, more materials to then sell them further too. Now, I did try out the orchidry, but that is really not worth it. It takes too long and it takes the spot away for the goats. We had the heavy plowing, but it's better and easier to actually get sheaves. Now, we could increase the berry deposit. We could have our hunters trap better and we could start producing honey, which each of those are actually eating up workers just for a minimal gain. In the long run, you do want to have charcoal burning and also the deep mining. But right now, the cheap breeding is the most efficient way to essentially produce more money because the sheeps are going to be under farming. You're going to make the pasture. Workers collect wool from grazing sheeps and then the wool can be turned into yarn. And with this yarn, we could then produce in the tailor's workshop clothes. And these clothes can then be sold also again for Good money. You notice every money making plan is having something to do with what resource is infinite, not with a finite resource. Now, I would say, though, that's it already. Very good basics for you. I'm going to unlock the sheep breeding and for the sheep breeding, just to give you a quick look on this, you have to essentially build their pasture, right? Like this. And then you have to add a sheep farm to then to then have the workers essentially take care of the sheep. But you're not getting sheep like this. No, you need to build a livestock trading post to then essentially start trading livestock in to buy your first sheep. But then your sheep are going to be starting to multiply because that is possible now. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like this style of video. Bit long. And if you made it to this point, a huge shout out. If you'd like to see more of this kind of concept of really the more winded, building this together, getting you all the explanations out to understand how the game is working in and out, I'm more than glad to create more. And if you want to see my first live stream of actually discovering Mana Lords, there you go. Enjoy. Thank you very much.